Police in El Paso, Texas say they're responding to an active shooter situation. They're warning people to avoid the area of Hawkins and Gateway East. Our Rosa Flores is joining us right now with this. So this is a, a shopping mall, shopping strip. And what more do we know about whether there's one uh, potential gunman or multiple? We have very limited information at this point, um, Fred, but what we do know, and this is just into our newsroom, at least one person has been injured, and, and this is at El Paso Walmart. Um, uh, like you said, this is a shopping center. We're, we're trying to learn more about this area. Actually, one of our producers has visited this, this particular shopping mm. center and just covering the news, and she says that on a normal Saturday, on a normal weekend, there's a lot of people shopping. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in, at this shopping center, we've also learned that three businesses are on lockdown, and these three businesses um, are reportedly around this shopping center, around this Walmart. These businesses are the Landry Seafood House, um, Hooters, and also Red Lobster. We're getting reports from witnesses on the scene who say um, that there were people running around. They could hear helicopters overhead, police responding to the scene. Of course, a very active scene and a very active situation and police and fire um, uh, officers and, and firefighters asking uh, people to avoid this area because it is still an active scene and um, police, of course, responding. We don't know anything mm -hmm. about the potential shooter or shooters at this time, but we're asking those questions, hoping to learn more. But again, uh, the latest that we're learned, we've learned here in the Siena newsroom is that at least one person has been injured. We're making more phone calls, trying mm -hmm. to get more information, Fred, and we'll get, get it to you as soon And as just possible. looking at that aerial shot, that kind of Google map, it's, it's difficult to discern whether that's like an enclosed mall. Um, you know, it certainly is a, a, a collection of a variety of stores there. You mentioned the three, you know, rather sizable restaurants that are on lockdown. Do we know anything more about, you know, this this mall, uh, you know, whether it's open or a closed mall? You know, we don't, but we're trying to learn more information about that. Mm -hmm. and, and in just thinking about the time of year, mm -hmm. um, Fred, we're very close to start of the school year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of the things that could be happening at, at Walmart is, is families going to mm -hmm. um, this shopping center and others around it to get school supplies, that sort of thing. That, of course, a huge concern. Um, but again, the latest report that we have into our newsroom right now is that at least one person is injured. All right. Or as a Flores, keep us posted. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. All right. Let's talk further with me now. Former Secret Service agent Jonathan Wackrow and former Assistant Secretary at the Department of Homeland Security, Juliet Kayam. Good to see both of you. So, Jonathan, you first, mm -hmm. you know, give us an idea of how law enforcement approaches a situation like this. Well, listen, these, these are very dynamic and unpredictable situations. And when police first get report of an active shooter uh, in a vicinity of just a general area, right now, uh, El Paso police and, and responding law enforcement have a very wide area of operation that they need to contain and then address the threat um, uh, immediately so they, they stop the, the, the active shooter. Terminology here is key. Active shooter means that there is a suspect or multiple suspects that are engaged in the act of shooting a weapon mm -hmm. and causing you know destruction and harm to individuals and property. So it's key here that they're still utilizing the word that it's an active scene and that there's an active shooter. So that means that the law enforcement has yet to uh, address this threat and, and mitigate it. So you know uh, the public should heed the warning that's being put out via social media and other outlets to, to stay away from this area because uh, you could be put in, in harm's way. Mm -hmm. Juliet, that some of the businesses are on lockdown uh, help folks understand that the strategy involved there when you have a lockdown situation, you still have an active, you know, shooter and people might be worried about, you know, being more vulnerable when they are asked to stay put. So uh, just picking up on what Jonathan said in terms of um, how to read at least what we know now coming out of the police, um, I think given the amount of time that it's been since that first tweet to now, one has to assume there is something in terms of their inability to, to get the shooter or shooters. And so uh, there's a variety of options that we tell the public when you're in law enforcement. One is run, if that's available. But in this case, it appears that uh, because they don't know where the active shooters are, or maybe the person or people are isolated to say the Walmart, mm -hmm. everyone else is much safer actually barricading inside, not being vulnerable to stray bullets or any sort of shootings that may occur. And that's what the police 
police are asking them to do. You know, the fact that the Walmart seems to be a focus of it, and Jonathan certainly knows a lot of this, you, know, you do have workplace violence issues, you also have family issues that may get uh, a little bit um, uh, uh, violent. Uh, I don't know about the Walmart rules in El Paso, but mm. certainly Walmart also sell weaponry. Um, and so there's just a lot of variables right now, but in terms of protecting the vast majority of the public, you got to stay put. And if you're in, if you think someone you know is in the area, just stand back for now, unfortunately. And, and then, Jonathan, you know, talk about the, the resources, you know, for local authorities to be able to handle um, and, and how they approach something like this. And at what point do federal authorities get involved? Well, I'm sure federal authorities are, are going to be immediately involved, but the, uh, the, the, the first responders are the El Paso police. It's, um, you know, they're tactical units. Uh, just prior to uh, coming on air, I did take a quick look at, uh, you know, uh, the El Paso police website. They are very well versed. They have, you know, uh, mandatory training around active shooter uh, protocols, as well as they've expanded into, into their Citizens Academy. So they take a public-private partnership in, in, in terms of how do they address and respond to uh, these critical incidents of, of, of active shooter situations. So uh, immediately, the first responders on scene, the, the first law enforcement officer that arrives, their duty is to go in and address that threat, to try to put that threat down immediately. Uh, that is a challenging situation right now. We are talking about a very large area, uh, whether it's Walmart, the, the, the mall that's next door, Reports that are coming into 911 and other sources also can you know, uh, lead to some sort of uh, you know, chaos or confusion for responding officers. So right now, in the uh, the immediate action is command and control, containment, and addressing that threat. Hmm. And so our affiliate KSTM is now reporting too. You know that multiple victims uh, are involved here. Uh, we don't know the extent of injuries or the status, but that many have been injured. Um, Democratic presidential candidate and former Texas Congressman Beto O'Rourke uh, is responding to this, tweeting out, "Truly heartbreaking. Stay safe, El Paso. Uh, please follow all directions of emergency personnel as we continue to get more updates." Uh, Julian, uh, Juliet, what, what are your uh, thoughts and concerns um, based on very yeah. thin information that we have, yeah. just that it is active. And Jonathan and I, unfortunately, were together last week and we'll be super careful about what we're, what we know now and just reminding people last Sunday, you know, the, the original reports were that the police had uh, killed the the, uh, um, uh, the shooter in at the Garlic Festival. We've now learned a few days later that it was actually a suicide. So these first reports are really, really tend to be, uh, not, that, not that they're always wrong, but they are just something that, that is part of the information and, we have to take And in. Juliet, so, as you're talking, we're seeing video that's just now coming and you know, it looks like someone's cell phone video running, uh, moving. Yeah. You can see now what appears to be one shopper uh, running. Um, and we don't know in which location right. this is, yeah. whether that's, you know, in one of the lockdown uh, locations and these images have been sent. Oh, now we're seeing them actually in the parking lot um, running. I don't have anything more to tell you about how these images were yeah. obtained, um, the story of this, but you can see it puts us there in a moment. You know, the sheer panic, uh, yeah. you know, uh, what happens after people hear gunfire or hear that there is an active shooter. Right. They, you know, to run away is obviously the, the right response at this stage. And you led, as Jonathan was explaining, that uh, the, the only priority of the police right now is to get the shooter. It's actually not to get people out of the building right now. They need to get the shooter for shooters to, to bring it down. If we're hearing multiple reports of injuries, it means that um, either, you know, uh, that, um, let me put it this way, the fact that the El Paso police have not provided any more information says to me that this is uh, at least serious active shooter case and they uh, do not have any news to provide except to the public and this is where these are lessons learned after Columbine and after all these active shooter cases the best the police can do right now is just provide information to the public in the surrounding mm -hmm. area stay put and do not go to that area I know it's hard for people mm -hmm. watching a family member in the and, area they and let me ask you, let me ask you, uh, Jonathan, quickly, you know, so we've seen these images, we see what, you know, the Dillard's mm -hmm. um, department store, uh, Rosa Flores has uh, reported on, you know, a Walmart being there and other big restaurant chains. So now that gives us a better idea about the size of the shopping mall. And these are large establishments, which means a lot of people on a Saturday early in the day. Talk to me about mm -hmm. the then approach mm -hmm. from law enforcement to deal with something 
you know, geographically so large on the map. So again, it goes to containment. Law enforcement has to set up a perimeter. They have mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, try to, you know, um, contain this threat, ensure that if there is an active shooter, that, that individual, that threat doesn't try to put their weapon down and uh, mm -hmm. integrate into fleeing uh, individuals. So this is a very dynamic and challenging moment for law enforcement uh, as they're trying to address this threat. Mm -hmm. Complicating the matter further, as we're hearing that there are injuries, Emergency mm -hmm. medical responders are not going to go into an active shooter mm -hmm. zone. They're not going to no. go into a, to a hot zone. So that, that makes it much more difficult where the responding mm -hmm. law enforcement is, is there. Their primary mission is to put that threat down. 